In a, so today's video, we're going to go over it using the slant boards. Now, some of the other videos we put out there, we talked to you guys about how we use the slant boards to help train our clients how to keep their foot and ankle in the right positioning to be able to apply some of the principles we always talk about, like heels away all day, gold dot, green dot alignment, riding the rails, bowing the knees out. A lot of times, these principles make sense to people, but actually taking them and applying them and doing them, it, sometimes they just can't make the connection between their mind and their body. And it gets a little frustrating with people. So what the slam boards do, it lets us, and we can turn them in different angles, right? We use the slam boards, and we also use another tool, tool called, the, called the WEX steps. And like I said, what both these tools do is you stand on them, and they allow you to put the angle of the foot and the ankle at a particular pitch that makes it easier to just naturally stand in these positions. And it just puts your body in the natural natural stance it should be in and just standing and like doing some of your exercise in there they just feel so much better your body moves easier you don't get all the grindy aches and pains like you can sell it just by standing here right now I'm on the outside rails of my foot my toes are naturally turning in my heels are away my knees are out and just by standing here I got a ton of activation in my glutes and my hamstrings where normally if I was standing on the ground I would be going like this, knocking my knees in, squeezing through my quads. That's a ton of activation for my hip flexors and eventually my back goes. So when I first went on my journey of eliminating my back pain and trying to figure out what I was doing wrong, just by standing on these things, doing some of my basic exercises like bicep curls, squats, deadlifts, whatever, really helped train my body to learn the proper way to stand again. So besides from the standing and the, and the, and the stance correction, we're going to show you how you know, we're going to take this particular tool and apply it to some of the other exercises you'll see yourself doing, like your squats, your kettlebell swings, or your deadlifts, where those are typically the three exercises I see for most people that they have a ton of knee activation where, like, they're caving in with the knees, their toes are turned out, and just they're putting themselves in the wrong positions where they're not getting the benefit they're looking for from the exercise, and they're making themselves a little more prone to injury. So three exercises we're going to go over, squats, deadlifts, kettlebell swings, but this is not an all-inclusive list. There's other ones you could put in there also besides than these, but we're just going to go over these three for today, right? Now, while you absolutely can do barbell squats on these, I'm not really a fan of them because if you have the bar racked in front of you, you've got to blindly step up into them and you can miss them, or you got to come out with the bar behind you, which is easy to get into, but then you don't know how to put the bar back. So from a safety perspective, I like using kettlebells and using and uh, doing goblet squats with the wedges where I think goblet squats are a phenomenal exercise. You're able to train the legs with a ton less weight, um, but your body's in a better position where it lets you move more naturally. And just with my bad back, I still do barbell squats too. I use safety bars. Um, it just puts me in better positioning, but I find myself doing more and more goblet squats because it lets my body move in the right position it's supposed to be in. So I use kettlebells, right? You can use it with a dumbbell if you want also. I'm going to take my foot. The first and the second toe are going to split the line of the tape, and my heels are going to go on the line of the outside, right? So heels in the line, first and second toe split. And it's going to put me in that natural position that you always hear me talking about, slightly pigeon-toed in. Heels out, I push my knees out. Holding the kettlebell tight to my body is going to force me to activate my shoulder blades and keep my shoulders back. And all I'm going to do with the goblet squat, right, is I'm going to come down, I'm going to let the arms go between the body, and then I'm back up. Keeps my spine straight. I'm able to build the knees. Down. I like to get a little pause in the bottom. You can see how my knees go out, and I'm able to load the back side of the body where... Let me shift these so you can see a side view. Same thing, goblet squat. Normally with the barbell, the bar is pushing me forward. So it naturally puts me into spinal flexion, holding the goblet squat, which is very similar to a front squat, but without the awkward positioning of the bar, right? I'm here. My spine stays straight up and down. I'm able to get deep into that squat. It's a ton less pressure on my hips. It's a ton less pressure on my lower back. My spine's not rounding out. Look how straight that is. Look at that. Somebody give me a dollar, and I'm up and down, all right? So I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of kettlebell goblet squats. Um, barbell squats, they're still good, but with my back injury, I really can't do them too often. So whenever I have a day where I can't do my barbell squats, goblet squats are my go-to. You can also do them with a dumbbell, but I think the kettlebells work better. Force you to keep better body alignment. Goblet squats. So 
Now go on the deadlifts, same thing. You can, use, you can totally use the wedges for your barbell deadlifts and your hex bar deadlifts. Now what I will say is when you're doing your barbell deadlift, right? I'd have the barbell set up, it's right here, I'm standing on the wedges. The wedges would be together, I got them apart because I'm gonna do the kettlebell variation, but I would basically reach down, grab the bar, and you can see how naturally it would force my legs to bow out, right? So I'd be right here. I'd be in the bar, right, come on. I would come down, I would grab my bar, I would have to get a little wider stance, but you can see how it naturally bows my knees out. So when I come up to lift, it's all hips. It forced me to drive my hips out and back as I go. I like doing the hex bar, because same thing, with a straight bar, I have a tendency to round my shoulders forward. So I would do my hex bar deadlifts. I'm up and I'm down. You can see how it naturally forces the knees to bow out, which is gonna be a ton more activation of the glutes, a lot less hip flexor, a lot less quads. Now, if you're doing your barbell or your, or your hex bar, and your mobility still needs a little bit of work and you can't get all the way down, to compensate for the higher raise of the wedges, I would put my weights, stack them on top of a couple plates to raise them up higher off the ground, and you eventually work your range of motion back in, right? You could totally, totally, totally do them with a barbell or a hex bar, and I'm a huge fan of the hex bar right if i'm going really heavy it's all hex bar i don't do like super heavy straight bar anymore it's just my back injury it's just not worth it for me but i'm a huge fan of kettlebell deadlifts right because now besides from having to take that wider grip which is going to force you to be more prone to rounding the shoulders forward now i can keep my arms straight and tight to my body i can really load between the legs i can bow out and i'm up i get a little hip pop i tap and I come back up. It's naturally gonna force me to ride the rails, right? Of my foot, the outside blade. It's naturally gonna force my heels out and my knees out, because I'm going between the legs, and it gives me a ton more activation, right? From the back of the legs versus the quads and the hip flexors, where any of you guys that have done deadlifts, you probably let your knees cave in a little bit, you probably tightened up your hip flexor, you probably rolled your shoulders, you probably had some kind of back injury. This is a great way to train your deadlifts, but not get all the injury crap going on. Squeeze and I'm in. I tap, I come back up, I squeeze. I tap, I come back up and squeeze. And what's really going on here more so than anything else is the wedges are putting your feet in a position where you don't have to concentrate on standing the right way. You have to concentrate on lifting the weight and keeping your back straight. The wedges are gonna do the work for you until you figure out how to do it on your own. So, kettlebell deadlifts. So. Kettlebell swings, right? Now, I can tell you for a fact, and listen, I wrote two books on kettlebells. They're both over 200 pages each, right? Download free copies on my website if you want, if you haven't done so already. But one of the problems that happens with kettlebells is especially if you're going for these high repetition workouts, like, oh, we're gonna do 100 kettlebell swings today. That just makes no sense to me. And I'm gonna tell you why. As you start fatiguing, your knees are going to start caving in, you're going to collapse the ankle, and you're doing the exercise from the hip flexor, the quad, and the inner thigh versus going through your glutes and your hamstrings, which is going to put you in, it's just going to put you like you're asking for some kind of pulled muscle because you're here and you're not training the muscles you want to get. Look, if you can keep good technique and form for 100 kettlebell swings, that's great. I think it's a little overkill for myself personally, and I used to love doing that stuff, but for me, the reward isn't worth the risk. But... Why is that an issue? Because when you're doing your kettlebell swings, you gotta keep these naturally wider stances to get the bell between the legs. It's gonna be so easy for you to let the ankle bone collapse and slip to the inside blade of the foot that you're gonna notice that even though you're, you're hinging at the hip, you're hinging at the hip, but you're creating the force from the hip flexor and the inner thigh, all right? Where, going with my kettlebell, going with my wedges, it's naturally gonna keep me on the outside blade of my foot, right? I'm gonna take a slightly more narrow stance, but I'm gonna bow my knees out. And now from here, easier for me to stay bowed. Knees out, I'm on the glutes, I'm snapping and driving, and I'm locking out to the hips, not the knees. And you can see how there's no collapsing of my ankle or my foot. Inside ankle bone is high, pop it to the hips. I could even do, my one arm swings, I'm getting such better glute activation because now when I'm going, I'm loading on the bow, right? From a side view, let me turn this around real quick. Right from a side view, you can see how I'm here, right? 
my back is straighter. I pop the hips. I'm not leaning over my one foot, I'm staying centered in the middle, and my legs are loaded and pressed out. And what is it naturally doing for me? Toes slightly turned in, riding the rails, heels away, knees out, right? Shoulder blades tight. The wedges are doing all that for me. So they're a phenomenal tool to help aid you and putting your body in the right position so you can get the benefit of the exercise. And as time goes on, you'll learn how to do them without them. And it's a great tool to always go back to if like you're having a bad day and you just lose alignment. It's a great tool for reminding yourself the way you should be standing. So I think they're a great tool. We also use the WEX steps. We'll use those in one of the next coming videos, but take that, add it to your routine. Let me know how it works out for you guys. And if you have any questions, like always, reach out to myself. Somebody from my team is, or myself will reach out to you, give you whatever the tips you need to help keep you going. And, uh, you know, don't let this one go. This is a good tool. I want to see you guys working into your routine. So great job today. See you in the next one.